So when I was preparing this piece for Jerry, I realized I have never played this piece or sung this piece in church or anywhere. And uh, I thought, wow, how did I miss this? This is from 1971, so put your bell bottoms on, okay, and get ready. This is a sing-along. As you can see from the words, there's not many. So it's just one of those things we're going to do, and we're going to sit on the top of Kid Kesey's bus, look at the sky. <laughs> did I say that? I, I did say that, didn't I? I guess I'm back. <laughs> Egypt was a faraway place. Day by day, day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow me more dearly, day by day, come on now, day by day, day by day. Oh, dear Lord, three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow me more dearly, day by day, day by day, day by day. I pray see thee more clearly love thee more dearly follow thee more dearly day by day day by day day by day oh dear Lord things I pray to see thee more clearly love thee more dearly follow thee more nearly day by day day by day day by day by day by day by day, by day. Beautiful. And if you're here in the sanctuary, you see not only a bow tie, but the preaching shoes. The preaching shoes are on. <laughs> so with no further ado, Reverend Jerry Brigg will give today's lesson. And I have to say our usher back there has pretty purple shoes on too. So make sure you check those out. And I'm taking this off instead of putting it around my neck because it hides my bow tie if I put it down. And then you won't know I'm speaking. That's right. Thomas Wolfe, the 20th century American author, wrote a no novel entitled, You Can't Go Home Again. Toward the end of the book, he wrote these words. You can't go back home to your family, back home to your childhood, back home to a young man's dreams of glory and of fame, back home to places in the country, back home to the old forms and systems of things which once seemed everlasting, but which are changing all the time, back home to the escapes of time and memory. We all might want to return to simpler times once in a while, times when we were young and life was perhaps a little more carefree. Few of us have had the experience of living exactly where we grew up. Times back, trips back to those places though, where we did spend our younger days are often jarring. Things aren't the same. The church is smaller. 
The hill behind the house is less steep. Strangers are living in your childhood home. The school is gone. Houses have been built where there once were meadows and fields and orchards. The little store in the corner has closed. We might long for better days, simpler times to relive old memories, but we aren't going to find them when physically we return to a place that is no longer ours. And that's just a physical return. Emotional and psychological returns are just as tough, if not more so. And for some, sometimes our memories aren't so good and we don't want to return perhaps. Plenty of people have had difficult childhoods that were painful. Those folks either don't want to look back or they look back at a time that didn't really exist. However you view your early life, returning to it according to Wolf and all common wisdom is impossible. You can't go home again because home isn't really there anymore. There's a story in the Christian scriptures about Jesus, that guy. He went back to his hometown, Nazareth, at the beginning of his ministry where he spoke in the synagogue. At first, things were going well. The people were amazed and thought highly of what he was saying. But things took a bad turn. The home folks eventually turned on him, saying something along the lines of, who do you think you are? He compared himself to the great Hebrew prophets Elijah and Elisha, and that didn't really go over well. We know you're just Mary and Joseph's kids, a regular old carpenter's son. The crowd became so enraged, that's the word that's used in the scripture, enraged that they took him out to the outskirts of town and tried to throw him off a cliff. That'll teach him, they thought. Now, even a person as Jesus couldn't return home. And just as an aside, my favorite part of this whole story is the very end when Jesus just walks away. No miracles, no angels coming to help him out, no disappearing act. He just walks away. How many problems today could be solved if people would just walk away? But I digress. Both Wolf and this story have a strong message for us. Indeed, you can't go home again. And to try to do so it invites perhaps derision or being ignored or potential violence at worst and disappointment or a huge letdown at best. But there is one home we can always return to, and that is our home in God. It's the home that is constantly and forever with us. From the moment of our first breath until beyond our final one, we are at home with God, whether we recognize it or not. And we can always return there when we think we've strayed or gone far off path because God welcomes us home with open arms forever and always. God saw us from the beginning. And unlike those town folks of our past, God sees beyond who we used to be and even sees beyond who we are now, not to mention who we will be tomorrow. Our infinite God bursts through time who, and he cares not about our past, present, or future. God cares about who we are and what we do with ourselves in bringing about a better world, a justice-filled, caring world filled with love for the rest of creation and for ourselves. It doesn't matter to God what has happened in our past or whose offspring we are or what we were like as a youth or what we did when we were young. God seeks for us to go home to God and do God's work there at the place where God is. We can return to this home with God again and again and again. And we know that we will always be welcomed and loved. Home is a place of comfort, especially our home with God. We can relax when we're at home lying back in the arms of God and knowing we're secure and safe. 
Being at home in God means we can go on in our own world, knowing we have a place we can escape to when things get difficult or overwhelming here where we're planted. Each of us, every one of us wants to escape at some point. Things can get too much at time and our home with God is our place of retreat. Being at home in God means delving deeply into our inner being and finding that place where the divine resides within each of us. That's the beautiful thing. We don't have to travel or roam to find our ever-present home with God. We carry God's home always and ever. We just have to be attentive and create a space for that home of God to reveal itself to us. You know, it doesn't matter whether you roam far from where you, the place where you were born and grew up, like I have 3,000 miles away, or if you're just around the corner from that very place, you really can't go home again. Things have changed, including, and especially you. You won't find the situation that you grew up with, good or ill. So neither romanticize the past nor try to escape it. And as Reverend Brock reminded us a few weeks ago, it is what it is. But no, there is no return, except to the home where God welcomes you over and over. And so it is. Amen. So I invite you to settle in where you are, whether you're here in the sanctuary or sitting on a sofa at home, and just relax, settle into that home with God. Take some time now for some deep breaths. Breathe in deeply, hold it for a moment, and then let it out slowly. And I'll just give you a few moments of silence to do that. And I invite you, if you want, to close your eyes. I'm going to read a poem entitled, You Can Never Go Home Again. It's a poem by Lawrence Lee Button, a poet I've never heard of before. But hear these words as you sit and relax. So many roads I've traveled in this dark and dreary life. And yet so many roads lay before me that I have yet to step upon. past is always with you. Haunting you. Beckoning you. Calling you to return just one last time. And yet, when you get to where you have been before, nothing is the same. And you feel unwanted. Walking down a street where you used to live, The house you lived in has been torn down and is no longer there. Old
only memories remain of a lifetime lived so long ago. People that you have once known but do not know you anymore. Wave and smile blankly at you in the street. The pain, a lingering lump in the throat. choking down tears left unshed. Sorrow bubbles up from deep inside. You move on. For everything changes. You can never go home again. But we here today know we can always go to where God is. Home with the divine. Now take a few more deep breaths. Take a few deep breaths as we close this time of meditation. And move around a little to bring yourself back to where you are, but knowing that you can return to this place where we have just been any time you need. So I invite you, if you haven't already, to open your eyes, look around, see where you are, and know you can go home with God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Jerry. It's an interesting topic. I found myself thinking that could even be a, a series. Because we talk about homes a lot, don't we? And we talk about spiritual homes. This is a spiritual home for people. And what makes something a home? It's when you feel comfortable. It's also when you feel um, inspired or all of who you are. It's what I was talking about when I mentioned San Francisco. I feel at home in San Francisco. It's important to find those places. And I guess I would just add that if you're at home on Zoom, if you don't already, here, here um, in the sanctuary, we see a number of beautiful things. We have an altar. And uh, if you are on Zoom and you don't have one already, you might consider making a little home altar, making a special sacred place um, that you either have in front of you when you attend um, services or not. But that can be a really wonderful thing to have a, a home altar where you place those things that are sacred to you and that remind you um, who you are, and as the phrase goes, whose you are. So, speaking of that, speaking of spiritual homes, here at Unity Spiritual Center, we have an identity. We are an ocean of love. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live. And I invite you to join with me in saying them aloud. Our vision is centered in God, 
we co-create a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. Our mission is we are a creative, joy-filled spiritual community dedicated to healing, inspiring, and transforming the lives of all people through prayer, education, and love. And our values are we are spirit-led, generous with resources, inclusive, joyously creative, and guided by integrity. And in this space, feeling inspired by our vision, mission, and values, and feeling enriched by what we've experienced here today, let us take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous ties and love offerings. As Michael shares a, another beautiful song, please take that time to write out a check to USC, or if you are on Zoom, to make a donation online using the link that is in the chat. If you're here in the sanctuary, Randy will come for Randy and Kathy will come forward to take your offering. Practicing the principle of tithing ourselves as a spiritual community, we are pleased to tithe 10% of the offering collected every Sunday to various unity organizations and local nonprofits serving our city. So let us take a moment now to bless our tithes and love offerings placing them in our hands or next to our hearts as we say our offertory prayer, which you will see behind me. Divine love through me blesses and, and multiplies all that I have, have all that I you. give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. If you believe in your heart, though, no one can change the path that you must go. Leave what you feel. Know you're right because the time will come around when you'll say it's yours. Believe there's a reason to be believe you can make time stand still and know from the moment you try if you believe i know you will if you believe in yourself right from the start you'll have brains and you'll have a heart you'll have courage to last your whole life If you believe in yourself, like I believe in you. Believe that you can go home. Believe you can float on air. Then click your heels three times. If you believe, then you'll be there. Believe right from the start believe in the magic right there in your heart believe all these things not because i told you to but believe in yourself if you believe in yourself just believe in yourself i believe in you are.